Merry Christmas, one and all. Christmas mornings as a child, I remember lying in bed waiting. It seemed like forever for my parents to get up, at which point my sisters and I bolted from our beds and down the stairs. Dad built a fire in the fireplace while we stared at the packages under the tree and squirmed in anticipation of what might be inside. Finally, one at a time. Oh, the agony of waiting our turn! We each opened a gift, squealing with delight to find something long wished for. Or the practical gift, maybe not quite as exciting, I mean, gym socks, but appreciated just the same. We watched as someone opened a present we had chosen and hoped they would like it. Then Dad would take over the kitchen to make his traditional breakfast of fat pancakes, and the day would settle into happy puttering with the gifts received maybe a drive to see my cousins, and endless consumption of Christmas cookies. Whatever your Christmas Day tradition, I am willing to bet that things are a little different this year. Canceled travel plans, the loss of someone dear, an extra shift at the hospital, quarantined family members, all have made Christmas 2020 a little less merry and bright for many. But today, we celebrate the birth of a special baby, a Savior, which is Christ the Lord, in a humble stable with a manger for his bed, to a young woman and her carpenter husband, with only the friendly beasts and some skeptical shepherds to bear witness. Jesus Christ has come as an innocent baby to bring light to the world. And that good news is the same this year as it has been in years past and will be in the future. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and he shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Please enjoy this special Christmas Day playlist of music from our CPC musicians as you renew your own family traditions or make new ones. I leave you with the words of poet Robert Louis Stevenson, his prayer for Christmas Day. Loving Father, help us remember the birth of Jesus, that we may share in the song of the angels, the gladness of the shepherds, and the worship of the wise men. Close the door of hate and open the door of love all over the world. Let kindness come with every gift and good desires with every greeting. Deliver us from evil by the blessing which Christ brings and teach us to be merry with clear hearts. May the Christmas morning make us happy to be thy children and Christmas evening bring us to our beds with grateful thoughts. Forgiving and forgiven for Jesus' sake. Amen. Blessings to you on this Christmas day.
God rest ye merry gentlemen, let nothing you dismay. Remember Christ our Savior was born on Christmas Day. To save us all from Satan's power, well, we were gone astray. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy, comfort and joy. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy. From God our Heavenly Father, this blessed angel came. And unto certain shepherds brought tidings of the same. How that in Bethlehem was born the Son of God by name. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy, comfort and joy. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy. Oh,
The next carol, Come Thou Long Expected Jesus, is one that we've sung all through Advent and have taken our Advent theme from, the last line in, this, in the first verse, Joy of Every Longing Heart. In 1744 in Britain, when Charles Wesley was writing this carol, orphans were often relegated to workhouses and became part of the child labor force. Wesley was concerned about the plight of these orphans, as well as the huge gap between the rich and the poor. In the first verse, he talks about longing for someone to come and release the captives to sin and fear. Not just the sin and fear of the individual, but the sin and fear in a whole society that can hold us captive, often like it does today. So enjoy this carol as together we long not only for this Savior who came to Bethlehem, but this Savior that we know will come again.
Beautiful Christmas Carols, O Little Town of Bethlehem, was written by the Reverend Phillips Brooks during the time that he was the Episcopal Rector of the Church of the Holy Trinity in Philadelphia. This was during and after the time of the American Civil War. From his earliest years of preaching sermons, Reverend Brooks had become enormously famous for the soaring oratory and the inspirational preaching, so much so that he was asked to preach upon the death of President Abraham Lincoln, following Lincoln's tragic assassination. Yet, for all of his fame and accomplishment, Phillips Brooks was, well, he was burned out and he was depleted from trying to inspire his congregation throughout the horrific days of the Civil War, the mourning of so many of his parishioners, and the dispiriting death of a great national leader. So he left his pulpit for a sabbatical to the Holy Land over Christmas time, where he rode on horseback through the Judean hills and the fields where watchful shepherds had heard the angels' songs proclaiming Jesus' birth 2,000 years before. And he rode beneath clear, starry skies into the sleepy town, the sleeping town, of Bethlehem. And he was inspired and he was renewed, finally feeling the elusive peace that now filled his heart and restored his faith. Upon returning to Philadelphia, he then tried to fervently preach about his Bethlehem experience, 
and to convey the awe and the peace that he had come to know. Alas, he felt that his words kept falling short of the transformation that still welled from within him. After three years of attempts in his preaching, and now approaching Christmas of 1868, he finally just stopped trying to, to put his re-inspired faith into a sermon, and instead he let the words flow into a poem, reflecting the words and the insights of his Holy Land journey and journal. O little town of Bethlehem, how still we see thee lie, above thy deep and dreamless sleep the silent stars go by. Yet in the dark streets shineth the everlasting light. The hopes and fears of all the years are met in thee tonight. The very next day he rushed his poem to Holy Trinity's organist, Louis Redner, who immediately gave it his all, seeking to produce a soaring accompaniment to these sublime words and he too failed to produce anything that he felt was remotely worthy. Then, in the middle of a restless night's sleep, Redner awoke with a, a simple yet inspired tune in his mind that soon became the favorite Christmas carol of all the Philadelphia churches and then spread quickly around the world. For you see, with God's inspiration, God can take what is a simple and lowly thing, like a poem or a melody or a manger birth in a small Judean village, and God does change the world. O oh, holy child of Bethlehem, descend to us, we pray. Cast out our sin and enter in. Be born in us today. We hear the Christmas angels, the great glad tidings tell. Oh, come to us, abide with us, our Lord, Emmanuel.
angels from the bells of glory ring your flight o'er all the earth. You who sang creation's story now proclaims Messiah's birth. Come and worship. Shepherds in the fields abiding, watching o'er their flocks by night. God with us is now residing, yonder shines the infant's light. Come and worship, come and worship, worship Christ our newborn King. The ancient Advent hymn, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, originated in part from the great O Antiphons, a section of the medieval Roman Catholic Advent liturgy. On each day of the week leading up to Christmas, one responsive verse would be chanted. Each includes a different Old Testament name for the coming Messiah. Key of David, shoot from Jesse, wisdom from on high desire of nations. As we sing each verse of this hymn, we acknowledge Christ as the fulfillment of these Old Testament prophecies. Christ's first coming gives us a reason to rejoice again and again, yet we know that all is not well with the world. So along with our rejoicing, we plead, using the words of this hymn, that Christ will come again to perfectly fulfill the promise that all darkness will be turned to light. A verse that seems especially timely is this one. O come, desire of nations, bind all peoples in one heart and mind. Bid envy, strife, and discord cease. Fill all the world with heavenly peace. Please enjoy this lovely arrangement of the hymn for flute and piano.
What Child Is This, written by William C. Dix in 1865, is one of our most beloved Christmas carols. It uses a tune, Green Sleeves, a traditional English folk song, written circa late 16th or early 17th century. The duet you're about to hear combines What Child Is This with a lesser-known song titled Child of the Poor, written by Scott Soper, published in 1994. This song's counter-melody blends stunningly with the melody of What Child Is This. Hearing the lyrics together, side by side, also breathtaking. In part because it reminds us that hope is found in unlikely, low places. God could have chosen to be raised in comfort, but instead chose to come, as Soper's lyrics describe. Helpless and hungry, lowly afraid, wrapped in the chill of midwinter, comes now among us, born into poverty's embrace, new life for the world. Who is this who lives with the lowly, sharing their sorrows and knowing their hunger? This is Christ, revealed to the world in the eyes of a child, a child of the poor. The joy of Christ's birth has always been coupled with the sorrow and hunger and sin of the world. So today, as we celebrate the birth of our Savior and King, we must always remember that Jesus was born a child of the poor. i
Amid the Winter Snow is a favorite English carol that is not as well known in this country. The text highlights the story of the shepherds who heard the angels announce Jesus' birth in Bethlehem. Notice that this story speaks of Jesus not as a child, but as a lamb. In Exodus, the lamb's blood meant life for God's people in Egypt. Now at his birth, thousands of years later, Jesus is the lamb foretold by the prophet Isaiah, a lamb that would ultimately be led to the slaughter, redeeming all who believe from their sins. This juxtaposition of the birth of Jesus with his death is a reminder of that, as expressed in these words from the refrain, Hail, Redemption's Happy Dawn! We rejoice on Christmas Day that Jesus has come as a vulnerable baby, a gentle lamb, to give his life that we might have life.
Our final carol is O Come All Ye Faithful. This favorite carol was written by an English young English composer, Francis Wade, who composed both the melody and the first three verses in the 18th century. The invitation is to come all you faithful to Bethlehem, places us, the singers, in the midst of the shepherds who ran to find the Christ child in Bethlehem, and among the faithful who for 2,000 years have journeyed each year to Bethlehem in their hearts. So as we again journey to Bethlehem today, may you be filled with the wonder of Mary, the obedience of Joseph, the joy of the angels, the determination of the shepherds, and the peace of the Christ child. And may the blessings of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be yours. Amen.